Hello again, everyone, and uh, welcome to another Heart to Home devotional. It's here, here we go again with another day, another chance to grow in the spirit and the word. Uh, so recently, I've, I've heard Pastor Gary teach from the, the book of Daniel, and then I ended up reading two books that dealt with the book of Daniel. I didn't know that beforehand, but so that the message of Daniel has been on my mind and especially Daniel chapter six. So, so Daniel as a, as a young man had experienced a loss of identity and his people had been conquered. Jerusalem had been conquered. The temple had been destroyed and he was living in a completely different place than the land that God had promised to the, the Jews. And those in power were trying to wipe out the memories of all that Daniel knew and more profoundly trying to wipe out the memory of the God he worshiped. And we as American Christians either have or are experiencing a loss of identity as well. Christianity was once thought of as essential, favorable, good, and right. And now that identity is being wiped away from the American mind. Uh, here's a quote from the book, Being the Bad Guys by Stephen McAlpine. And it, I'll, I'll start out the quote here. Uh, it, it's on page 93. It says, quote, Once we were thought of as fairly harmless, if we were thought of at all, we, we, now we are seen as part of the problem in society, a group intent on holding things back. Once we were considered important in the government scheme, now we are viewed by the government as an impediment to its vision of a flourishing future. Once we are allowed to get on with our specific worship activity or worship practices, now these same practices are viewed with hostility and deep suspicion by our neighbor who are more than happy to inform on us. Identifying as the people of God is now on the back burner. The cultural heat has been turned up. Better to keep our heads down and wait for the angry cultural storm to pass." End quote. But we are not called to let the angry cultural storm pass. Jesus uh, never described the church as a gated community. We are, we are being seen as a serious impediment to the wonderful and liberated world that people want to create now. So let's look at Daniel. It was Babylon that was flourishing and it was Jerusalem that was sitting in rubble back in the promised land. And even still, Daniel didn't just let the cultural storm pass. He was active where he was. He used his giftings, his time, his influence to be a light right where he was. Daniel chapter six, verse seven says, all the high officials of the kingdom and the prefects and satraps the, and counselors and the governors are agreed that the king should establish an ordinance and enforce an injunction that whoever makes petition to any god or man for 30 days except to you, O king, shall be cast into the den of lions. So there you have high officials making law, a law that godly men and women really couldn't adhere to. And there was severe consequences for not obeying that law. So how did we get there? Well, in, if we back up Daniel chapter six, verse four says, then the high officials and the satraps sought to find ground for complaint against Daniel with regard to the kingdom, but they could find no ground for complaint or any fault because he was faithful and no error or fault was found in him. Then these men said, we shall not find any ground for complaint against this Daniel unless we find it in connection with the law of his God. 
So the storm of the vision for the new world had come to Daniel's doorstep. And what did Daniel do? If we go down to verse 10, it says, when Daniel knew that the document had been signed, he went into his house where he had windows in his upper chamber, opened them toward Jerusalem, got down on his knees three times a day and prayed and gave thanks before his God as he had done previously. So in verse 13, dropping down a little bit more, we see the witness of his own enemies. It says, then they answered and said before the king, Daniel, who is one of the exiles from Judah, pays no attention to you, O king, or the injunction you have signed, but makes his petition three times a day. So as McAlpine notes, by Daniel's example, we should also be faithful, faultless, and fearless. That's an excellent outline for how we should react to the things that are going on today. We need to set ourselves on a faithful trajectory. We, and even, even in the small things, we need to do this. We need to live in a faultless manner and we need to fear God instead of man. Now, what I want you to see is how King Darius reacted. Daniel chapter six, verse 14. Then the king, when he heard these words, he was much distressed and set his mind to deliver Daniel. And he labored till the sun went down to rescue him. So notice that even though King Darius had his own vision of what was right, Daniel had set down such a, a powerful example before Darius that Darius was conflicted when it came to Daniel. Daniel was opposed to the king's thinking, but it was as if Darius didn't know what to think about Daniel. He was conflicted. Daniel's faithfulness, his faultlessness, and his fearlessness had created that conflict in Darius. And that's the effect that we need to have on the unbelieving world around us. They need to see our goodness, even in and toward a world that is opposed to our beliefs. And to me, this is a very similar thought that's expressed by 1 Peter 3, verses one and two, where it says, wives in the same way, be submissive to your husband so that if any of them do not believe the word, they may be won over without words by the behavior of their wives when they see the purity and reverence of your lives. So in this case, instead of creating a conflict in the mind of your spouse, it's creating a conflict in those adhering to the world's kingdom. So let's pray. Lord, I just thank you that even though the world has turned against your children in a very abrupt and, and uh, very uh, difficult ways, Lord, uh, you are with us. Uh, regardless and Lord you have called us to be a light in what the world has become and we pray that you would give us the strength to do so in Jesus name we pray amen all right guys we'll see you the next time